Hello, my name is Kristen Ingram. I am a physical therapist for UPMC Centers for Rehab Services at our Peters Township office. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about upper extremity strengthening for cancer survivors. So as you are very well aware, we're going to be recording this and you're watching the recording right now. And I actually have a lot of background in sports physical therapy. I am residency trained. I did so at our UPMC Centers for Sports Medicine facility. And I also have a very strong background in sports and conditioning. I actually have my CSCS, which is a certified sports and conditioning specialist uh, certification. So that helps play into a little bit of me talking to you today about the upper extremity strengthening. So uh, just to give you a disclaimer on this, uh, none of this uh, background in this uh, presentation today is intended to formally diagnose or treat for the condition discussed, which is cancer. Uh, we strongly recommend that you consult with a physician before you start any exercise program. And if you have any symptoms related to the content of the presentation or any other condition, you should consult with your physician on that as well. So there are a lot of benefits that come with exercise. And I know many of you have participated in other discussions on exercise, but just to review some of them today, there is an um, improved survival rate of up to 50%. There's a reduction in fatigue. There is a uh, reduced incidence in what we call chemo brain, which some of you unfortunately have probably experienced through your, um, your incidents with cancer here. Uh, there are mitigation of chemo effects. There's an improved sensitivity of tumors to chemo treatment whenever people exercise, less depression with improved self-esteem, which actually beyond just cancer is across the board. So they have actually done studies to prove that when people exercise, it actually has the same effect as taking an antidepressant. So that's a really great thing that we see with doing exercise. Uh, there's re reduced morbidity and mortality from coexisting disease. So if we're not familiar with those terms, mortality, of course, is related to death and morbidity are things that uh, contribute to death, basically. So when we hear people say the word comorbidity, it's things like uh, obesity and talking about um, diabetes, heart conditions, things of that nature. Uh, there's improved muscle and bone mass and also an enhanced immune system, which is serves you very well, of course, with cancer. But um, in this day and age of COVID, of course, we want as best of an immune system as we can possibly get. So um, other considerations that you need to make before jumping into an exercise program are medications that were used in chemo or in conjunction with chemo. So a lot of the medications that are used can have an extreme impact on our bone health, balance, cardiotoxicity, which basically means poison to our cardiac system, um, muscular pain, nerve damage, and cognitive issues that can arise any type of surgery that was performed. So for instance, whenever somebody has a mastectomy, that couldn't be a reason to hold on upper extremity exercises because there potentially can be lymphedema in your body um, that develops mostly in the upper body. So um, a lot of times they won't have you jump right into a strengthening program, but I will talk a little bit more about that later on. And of course, the staging of the cancer is very important to look into as well. Higher stages of cancer are obviously going to be more impactful. So that's going to require higher dosing of chemo and radiation, and it's going to make it a lot harder to be very physically active. You're going to be much more fatigued from the cancer itself, as well as require a lot more chemo or radiation for that. So it might be a lot more difficult to jump into an exercise program because of that. Um, so a couple things to consider after having breast cancer. It's typically very important to keep your arms moving after you've had something like a lumpectomy, a lymph nodectomy, or a mastectomy. However, this is strictly going to be based upon your doctor's guidelines that he sets forward for you. Typically, they will tell you to get into range of motion exercises. These would include doing wand exercises, table slides, 
elbow winging, chest exercises, shoulder blade squeezes, scapular retractions, and side bending, which I will show examples of later on in this presentation. Strength exercises, as I mentioned before, are typically held in this group for about four to six weeks. But again, this will be determined by your medical doctor. They may start them earlier, they may start them later, but this will be discussed with your physician. Another consideration is um, for people who have head and neck surgeries. They typically do want you to avoid stiffness in your neck and um, head region. Um, but again, by your doctor's orders, this is only ha to happen whenever he advises, he or she, excuse me. It's important to do these often, but in small amounts whenever you do the exercises that are provided. You're not gonna be doing any heavy lifting. You're gonna do more so for endurance whenever you're doing these. So whenever we say um, you're not doing heavy lifting, obviously not picking up heavy things. And when we say endurance, you're gonna do more repetitions as opposed to doing less. So whenever I say repetitions, you're gonna be doing maybe 30 repetitions of a lighter load as opposed to doing, you know, 10 to 15 of a heavier load. And then of course, never pushing through pain as you may do more damage whenever you're doing any kind of stretch or lifting exercise after this type of uh, surgical procedure, whenever you have the head and neck surgeries. So whenever you're approaching an exercise program, there's a couple different ways that we go about it. So typically there's two different types of training that people will go into. They go into either circuit training or they will go into body specific training. Whenever we start talking about circuit training, we hit all body parts during the workout. So you will do a couple exercises for everything. So two leg lifts, you'll do two chest lifts, two bicep lifts, and so on and so forth. When we look at body specific, you will do certain body parts on certain days. So this can be split into doing two, three, four, five, or six days. So to give examples of that, you might do a two day split where you do back and biceps and uh, triceps for one day. And then another day you would do shoulders, legs, and chest. You would try to basically keep one large muscle group along with two smaller groups. So then we go into more of a three-day split. So on one day, you would do chest and triceps. Another day, you would do back and biceps. And then another day, you would do shoulder and legs. We could break it down more into the four-day split where you basically do a two-day split two times per week or you can emphasize it a little bit more closely. For example, you could do legs on one day. On day two, you can do shoulders, biceps, and triceps. On day three, you could do just your back. And on day four, you can do your chest. When you start doing five or six day splits, you start doubling your more difficult body parts to develop. So that's how people typically start breaking up their exercise programs. But if you're just really trying to get yourself back into shape and feel a little bit better after you've gone through the unfortunate uh, cancer that you've had placed upon you, you might want to look a little bit more into just doing some circuit training or just doing a couple days a week because Worrying about developing body parts and things of that nature, it's, you know, it, it's a little bit more difficult. We're not worried about developing body parts and really trying to have, you know, the guns and things like that. Uh, we're just trying to get back on, on, on the horse and everything like that. So that's much more important. So it's really important, though, on top of all of that, to make sure you include a cardio component. Um, you want to have some aerobic fitness into your routine. Ideally, you want to have 30 minutes four to five times per week, but realistically, you really need to work up to that. Um, the way that I usually tell people to try to start working up to that is to do multiple sessions per day. So doing 10 minutes three times per day or even 15 minutes two times per day if you can handle that. But again, that might not even be possible at first. You might want to just start off with 10 minutes per day. It's okay to really just work your way up to that. It does not need to start off at 30 minutes per day. That might be a very lofty goal. Um, just working your way up through those things is the most important way uh, of doing that. So you can do this in various ways, walking on a treadmill, walking outdoors. You can do biking if you're not able to put a lot of weight through your limbs. 
doing fitness classes is another way to accomplish that. But, you know, we, a lot of times just always associate exercise with doing things at a gym or, or using some type of equipment. You can always just do exercise by gardening outside or playing with your grandchildren is another great way to break a sweat. I'm sure a lot of you know that. So, um, any way that you can accomplish physical activity and just burn a few calories, however you want to do it, however you slice and dice it, it's a great way to get some cardio in. The other thing on top of all of that is keeping yourself very flexible. Stretching is absolutely very key and very, very important. Um, one of the things, if you ask multiple people, they're always going to have a different way to tell you that you should stretch. Uh, some people say before exercise, some people say after exercise, is there really truly a right way to do it? If you look at all the research on it, nobody has a, a, the right answer to it. Some research says this way, some research says that way. Just do it truthfully. The way that I propose that you do it is to never str stretch a cold muscle because that's when you start getting a lot of pulling in the muscle. I propose that you do it on a warm muscle. So do a little bit of walking first, do a little biking or jogging, whatever way that you like to warm up, then stretch your muscles. And then I would suggest doing a little bit in the beginning and a little bit after exercise to really get it loosened up. Whenever you do a stretch, what I can tell you is that the research shows that you should hold it for at least 60 seconds to see a permanent change in the length of the muscle. Now, this again, it's just like the cardio. It can be broken up. It does not need to be 60 seconds straight for you to see that permanent change. It's a total amount of time that you need to hold that. So you can do it two times for 30 seconds, six times for 10 seconds, or you can do the 60 seconds straight. It's however you prefer to do it. So what I'm gonna show you are a few exercises to stretch things out. And I will get back to some of those ones that are after uh, breast cancer uh, to get things loosened up as well. But first, I'm just gonna show you some general upper extremity stretches here. So from top to bottom and left to right, I'm gonna show you first the uh, shoulder stretch here. I'm just gonna back up a little bit so that you can see this. So the first one here is our shoulder stretch. Just gonna pull right across here like that. Again, holding it, making sure you get that 60 seconds in. And then we wanna work on our wrist flexor stretch. Just gonna pull down here like this. And I know that definitely gets me whenever I do that one. And then we're gonna go back into our tricep region just like this, pulling it back across the head. Now, the one that I have here, it's called the corner stretch. One of the things I can tell you, it is always hard to find an open corner in a house. We all have decorations in our corners and things like that. It can be a little tough. Um, if you don't have an open corner in your house, you can always use a doorway to do this. I'm going to show you in my corner here, I do actually have an open corner. So I'm going to take a walk back there. So you're going to face into the corner and you're going to put your forearms on the wall and lean your body into the corner. You can actually put one foot in front of the other to really lean into it, and you get a good chest stretch with that. Okay? Another way to stretch your chest muscles, if, uh, if that's not adequate for you, you can actually put your hands, clasp them behind your back, and pull in the front here. So your hands are back here, you're pulling behind your back to really get a good stretch in front of your chest. So those are just a few general upper extremity stretches that you might want to work on to get loosened up before you go into any upper extremity strengthening exercises. So now I'm going to move into some of the other exercises that are for the upper extremity for anybody that might be following a breast mastectomy. So. Again, from top to bottom and left to right, let me grab one of my tools here. Typically, whenever I'm in the clinic, I have a little stick to use, but I tell people all the time, you can use a broom, you can use any kind of stick. Right now I'm using my Swiffer because that's what I have here at home to use. 
And this is one of the wand exercises. We call it wand flexion. So it might be a little difficult to see me, but we're going to try. All you have to do with this, you're going to lay down and you're going to bring the stick over your head, letting it fall back. Whichever side is the side that's uh, your involved arm, let the uninvolved arm pull it back over your head. The, uh, the involved side is basically just going along for the ride. And then you bring it back up just like this. All right. Now the next one I have on here is called a table slide. I'm going to show you this on a bench right now. Typically you can do this at your kitchen table or a counter. I'm using my bench in my weight room right now. Whichever arm is involved, you're basically going to put a towel underneath your hand and let it stretch forward as far as you can take it. And then you might have to slide your body back a little bit to really get the full stretch on it. And then you pull it back in, just like that. All right, the next stretch on our list is elbow winging. And this is to help with getting full external rotation in our arms. So, you basically lay down on your back, bring your arms in towards your head, and then you let your elbows fall out, basically letting gravity do the work. And then you bring them back up towards your head. And then again, let them fall back out. Okay. Next, we move on to our scapular retractions. And this is to help with starting to get some of these muscles working again in the upper back region. So we start with our arms in at the side and you pinch your shoulder blades together, relaxing your upper trap muscles in here. So you squeeze together and then you relax your arms forward. Squeeze the shoulder blades, relax them forward. And lastly on this list, is doing some side bending. So the arms clasp over the head. You're gonna rotate to the side that you wanna stretch. And you should feel it pulling over on the side here. And then we can also stretch to the other side, just like that. Okay. So now we're gonna start moving into some of the upper extremity strengthening. And what I tell people all the time, you don't need to have a gym behind you to do any of these exercises, you can use, um, you can use bands, you can use uh, bar or barbells, you can use dumbbells, but you can use soup cans if you don't have any of those things. One useful tool is to have some of these bands. Bands are extremely cheap to be able to purchase. You can get them on Amazon. You a lot of times can have somebody cut bands for you and they're extremely cheap to get. So it would be useful to have some of that but um, you can make use of very simple equipment around your house. You do not have to be in a gym to make this work for you. So the first thing that we're going to do is start working on some um, chest exercises. And this is, to, um, this is to work in this area in your pec region. So I'm going to grab a couple dumbbells here. And all we're going to do is work on a simple chest press. So arms are starting right here. Feet are gonna be flat on the ground. Back is gonna be flat on the bench. If you do not have a bench available, you can lay on the ground flat as well. And all you're doing is pressing above your head, bringing it back down to chest level. If you are laying flat on the floor, obviously you will not be able to bring your elbows down as low. You're gonna have to bring them to about floor level and you won't, you'll just be pressing straight up right there whenever you do that. Do not bounce your arms when you do this. You wanna make sure that you keep them nice and slow motion concentrated when you do this. How you would do this with a band 
if you do not have dumbbells or soup cans available to you, you would wrap it around your back like so and wrap it around your hands to make it a little bit tighter like this. Lay on your back and press it up. Just like that. Okay. So we're gonna move on to the next exercise here. And this would be if you don't feel comfortable laying on your back, we can also do this in a seated position. So similar exercise, we're just basically gonna move it forward. Now you might not be able to do as much weight whenever you're seated forward like this. It's a little bit harder to do when you're in this position, but you're just gonna do that same motion like you were just doing laying down. And again, this can also be done with the band wrapped around your back. You might have to, now the difference with the band is you're gonna have to probably grab a little bit tighter in because the band is a little bit easier than laying on your back. So I choke up a little bit on that one, just like that. Okay, so moving on to the next one here. Same thing, we're doing another chest exercise. This one is called a pec fly. And what we do with this, it's what I call hugging a barrel whenever you do this, because you keep a slightly bent position in your elbows. You wanna basically, again, hug a barrel, just like this. And whenever you're laying down, it looks more like that. Imagine there's a barrel on your chest and you're just wrapping around it. Those elbows never get straight when you do this. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna start looking at doing some back exercises now. So I have people start with doing laying on their belly. And what I've tried to do with all of these exercises is provide multiple positions for you to do these in, because I know some people can't do things laying on their belly. Some people can't do things in a seated position. So I'm trying to give you an array of exercises to be able to work on in multiple positions so that I can accomplish whatever you need to accomplish for your personal needs. So this first one here is laying on your belly just like this, and you wanna bring the dumbbell up to your side by bending your elbow just past your back, like this. It's a pretty simple motion. One thing that's very common though, is that people will tend to rotate their back. You wanna keep your back nice and flat, no rotation. Okay. And now another way to accomplish that same type of exercise, I'm actually just gonna wrap right around this pole here that's in front of me. And a lot of times people will ask me how they can do this at home. Sometimes it can be a little tricky if you don't have any kind of poles in your house. I am pretty fortunate to have multiple poles in my basement here, but one way that you can do this, most of us do have door handles in our house or a sliding glass door handle, anything like that that you can wrap through and that's how you can accomplish it. Or even a bed post on your, in your house that you can wrap around. You can wrap a band around it and then basically sitting up nice and straight, you're just gonna pull the band towards you to try to work on that. And that works on the same exact muscle as I was working on whenever I was laying down on my belly, just pulling in like that. Okay. Now this one again, can be a little bit trickier to accomplish. Let me see if I can wrap up here around my pole above me here. This one's gonna work on a little bit different muscle group it's in my upper back, it's called my lat, well, it's upper into my lower, it's called my lat muscles. So with this one, I'm just pulling down like this, 
you're basically pulling through the elbows, pulling downward, making sure you're keeping your chest upright as you work on this. Like so. Now, one thing that we might have to do with this exercise, sometimes I tell people with the band that they have to maybe close it in the top of a doorway and do one arm at a time if they don't have something to wrap it around on the top. And that's okay. If you have to break it up like that, perfectly fine. But you know, we have to find different strategies for doing things at home whenever we don't have certain equipment to suit our needs. All right. So now we're gonna start looking into the biceps. Whenever we do this, um, there's multiple ways that you can work on your biceps so that we start targeting different muscle parts. So most of the time we see people working on their biceps and they're doing the palm grip up, just like this. And that really hits your biceps in the best way. Now, you'll also see people doing the thumb grip up. This hits your biceps, but it also hits a muscle. It's called your brachioradialis. I like to call it your drinking muscle because, hey, bringing the beer to the mouth, right? So <laughs> they always told us in PT school. So work on it like that. It hits a different muscle group, but it also helps the biceps out too. You also can do a palm down, but you know, it, it does hit your biceps, but it's a little bit trickier of a, a muscle to work there. So I usually suggest to people to do the palm up and the thumbs up whenever we work on the biceps. All right, now we're gonna work on the triceps a little bit. Couple different ways. I'll show you the seated one first here. You might wanna use a little bit of a lighter weight with this one. So we go here and we bring it down, just like that. You can also use your arm to help support because this can sometimes be a little bit harder. I'm showing it with a, the same weight that I was doing before. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I've been lifting for a lot of years. I wouldn't suggest using a heavier weight with this. But I, like I said, I've been lifting for a lot of years. Just like that. And now the motion that I'm going to show you laying down is a very similar motion as to what I was doing seated. Just like that. And this one, a lot of times people tend to lose a little bit of control on. They start to move their shoulders around a lot like this. You don't wanna move the shoulder whatsoever. The movement is just coming from the elbow like so, just right there. And you should feel all of it in the back of the arm. All right, so now we're gonna go into shoulders. So with our shoulder, we have a couple different portions of it that you wanna work on. We wanna work on the outside portion of it, which is, uh, it's part of our deltoid. It's our lateral deltoid. And we also wanna work on the front part of our deltoid, which is our anterior deltoid. We also have our posterior deltoid, but I figured we aren't gonna go kicking into that area. We're just gonna focus a little bit more on the front and the side. So to work on the side, I'm gonna work on bringing the arms out just like this. So I showed this in the standing position, but you can also work on it in the seated position. Seated to me is a little bit harder, to be honest. Everybody has their own choice though as to how they feel is a little bit more difficult. But we um, then we're gonna also work on going in the forward position. I have this uh, shown in the palms, uh, um, um, excuse me, the thumbs up position. You can also do this in the palms down position just to give a little bit of a different turn on it. The reason I showed it in the thumbs up position, sometimes people have a little bit of issue in their shoulder. The thumbs up position helps to avoid any kind of what we call impingement in the shoulder, which is kind of like crunching down on some of these different rotator cuff muscles. It might just be the best position for your shoulder. I have no problem with people doing palms down. Just don't do a thumbs down position because it's definitely no good for your shoulders. So again, out to the side, 
out to the front. And then lastly, this is another shoulder exercise. We can do this seated, we can do this standing. I'm just gonna show it seated for now. And it's a shoulder press. This is uh, one of the ways to do it. You can also do them out this way. I'm just showing the safest way for doing them, keeping them in nice and tight toward your head. This is a good way for people who have any kind of shoulder issues to do it, to do them nice and close in, close grip. Just like that, we wanna make sure we keep the shoulders stable. We don't want them wobbling around, keeping a nice, tight, tight, close grip. So, of course, there's not gonna be any questions. It's not really a live presentation right now, but if you do have any questions for me specifically, you can always send me an email and contact me at my office. I'm happy to field any questions that you might have about anything. And that is everything for today. And there are some of my resources. And I thank you so much for listening to my presentation.